In today's video, we are going to be covering the fourth video in our video series, Vanguard Boxes to Buy Before They Get Replaced. Today, we are going to be talking about Chaos. And yeah, we're going to be talking about three boxes in specific. So let's do this. But before we go on and talk about the three boxes that I wanted to go into in specific today and talk about, you know, savings, points, all that good stuff, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Beasts of Chaos Vanguard and the Beasts of Chaos in general, because I don't think I'm going to get the opportunity again. So the Beasts of Chaos, as you all know, are going to go away. They are not going to be in Age of Sigmar anymore, and they are instead going to be an Old World army. They are less chance to buy over in the US, everywhere else, uh, at least in Germany, in UK and so on. It's uh, sold out online and it's not going to return. Now, what happened with the Beasts of Chaos was somewhat predictable but also it still sucks as everyone knows that it has an army with round based beasts of chaos it just sucks what happened and yes you could rebase all of them and it is doable but it's still a lot of work and old world is just not the same as aos if you want to play age of sigmar it's a completely different experience from rank and file which old world offers so yeah, I don't know what to tell you. What happened with the Beasts of Chaos is a little bit wonky, a little bit weird, but it also was predictable. Didn't sell a lot of models, simply because the models were old, so it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. And uh, yeah, the Vanguard box is gone alongside with it. If you were having any hopes that the Vanguard box for the Beasts of Chaos is going to get any rules, I highly doubt so, because the box is going to be gone from store shelves for approximately three months or something, before 4th edition launches. So this box getting rules for Spearhead is almost impossible. So yeah, just in case you were getting your hopes up or anything, I think that, uh, yeah, we are not going to get any rules for the Beasts of Chaos Vanguard. I think the Beasts of Chaos are fully transitioning from Age of Sigmar over to uh, the Old World, and that's that. They are just dead in Age of Sigmar, and yeah, that's all she wrote. Next up, we are going to be talking about the Disciples of Tinge Vanguard box. This one is going to stay around. And I had some trouble kind of figuring out whether I like this box or not. And apparently a lot of other people had the trouble as well. Simply because it doesn't follow a theme. It gives you a little bit of everything. And while we get a lot of these in Vanguard boxes for the Disciples of Tinge and for Chaos in general, it's a little bit unusual to mix demons with just mortals. Uh, usually the game or the rules reward you for taking a specific sub-faction, either mortals or demons and so on. And especially in the Disciples of Change, you have a ton of options. You can pick Zangors as your battle line, you can pick the Ac Acolytes as your battle line, you can pick Horrors as your battle line, and so on. Thankfully, though, in 4th edition, all of that is going away and you don't have to bother about any of that. The only trouble that you're probably going to run into is that some leader choices are obviously going to support certain units better than others. So the Magister on Disc of Change, which is included in this box, is probably going to support Acolytes and other mortals. Meanwhile, if you wanted to play a little bit more Zangors, so if you wanted to have your own regiment of Zangors, you would probably consider having a Zangor Shaman as your leader, and that guy is then going to probably help those basic Zangors out a little bit, or just Zangor Skyfires or whatever else have you. So overall, this box is a little bit of everything, and I think that's fine as a beginner box. So let's get into what you're actually getting. You're getting a Magister of Tinge on Disc, you're getting 10 Acolytes, you're getting 10 Zangors, you're getting 3 Flamers of Tinge, and you're getting 3 Screamers of Tinge. So overall, as I said, basically everything. What's interesting though is that the Acolytes usually come in a box of 20. That is not the case here. So they just slashed the box in half and gave you, I think, 2 Spruce instead of 4, which is regularly. And overall, I think it's a nice assortment of models. Yes, we are memeing about Zangors being in every box, but at some point, you just can't help it because, you know, they are part of the faction. And um, at least lately in Warhammer 40k, and I think in part also in Age of Sigmar, they've kind of slowed down a little bit on uh, putting Zangors in every single box. So, yeah, the Vanguard itself, I have no idea how it's going to play on the tabletop in Spearhead. If it's going to stay the way, you can see it here, but you're getting 730 points. But everything uh, you can see is rather squishy. Yes, you have some spells to help you out. But in 4th edition, we are going to have to wait and see how the Disciples of Tinge are going to work. Whether the army abilities are going to change and how they are going to work in general. So as far as rules go, as always, I can't make any predictions because GW could go either way. As we've seen with, you know, Warhammer 10th edition. But for now, I think that this assortment of models is quite interesting. I think it's going to lead to fun matchups in Spearhead if this one is actually going to get rules. 
and you're going to have a lot of variety in there. For new players, it can be a little bit overwhelming to have, you know, five data sheets or war scrolls in there just to, because you have to juggle all of them, learn all the rules, all the weapons and so on. But overall, I think it's still manageable and it's still a fun box. Now, 730 points is definitely a whole lot. So that is definitely uh, on the plus side. And regarding the question whether I would consider picking this one up twice, I would probably say yes. The Magister on Disc of Zinc is probably going to be a coin flip, whether it's going to be really good or really bad in 4th edition, at least um, in the index. But as far as the rest goes, you know, having 20 Acolytes, having 20 Zangors and so on is definitely useful. And with the new regiments and how you construct your army, you don't have to lean super hard into one single sub -faction. So You don't want to run all Acolytes or all Zangors or all Horrors. Instead, you can build your little squads and you can attach them all together and build a 2000 points for us that way. If you just take a look at the list building rules for 4th edition, and it's kind of going to work out that way. So having a little bit of a mix of everything that the Disciples of Siege have to offer is a benefit in my book for 4th edition, and that raises the value of this particular box. As far as the savings go, as you can see, you're saving between 26-ish, 24 to 29%. It's below average by quite a bit, you know, average being for Vanguard box at least approximately 33%. So we are quite a bit below that. You're basically getting your Zangors for free and that's that. But it's still worth it to pick up as a new player simply because you're still saving money. The units are still useful. And the only thing that you really need to consider is whether a Magister on Tsinch is worth the second box or not. Or whether the unit is not worth it. But overall, as I've said in the previous videos, if you haven't seen them, is that I would highly recommend just buying one Vanguard box at the start. And then once 4th edition rolls around, you're just going to take a look at the rules, take a look at what's good and what's bad, and whether you need the stuff that is in the Vanguard box multiple times. The likelihood of you requiring more Flamers, Screamers, and all that good stuff is very high, but you never know. And furthermore, the most interesting thing is going to be to look at the Magister on Disc, whether the rules are good or not and whether the savings are going to, you know, make a second purchase of a second Vanguard box worthwhile. So overall, my final verdict on this box is that it is pretty good as a one-off buy for approximately anyone except for, you know, veterans who already have a huge assortment of Zangors and Acolytes and all that good stuff. Yes, you don't get any horrors or anything, but you can definitely buy them separately. And the likelihood of the spearhead that is going to replace this particular Vanguard box in the future uh, to be leaning towards horrors is very, very high. And then combining the Vanguard with the new Spirit potentially could be a good, you know, mix of all the units that the Disciples of Teenage have access to, except for Pyro's Fate Weaver and all that good stuff. Next up, we are going to be talking about the Slaves to Darkness Vanguard box. This one is one of my personal favorites for no particular reason. I just like the models a lot. I think that this kind of assortment of models makes a lot of sense, especially for beginners. And it's a great selection of models in almost any sense. And especially in Spearhead, if this one is going to get rules, I'm very excited to play this one simply because the models in there are no joke. They're actually really cool. So what are you getting? You're getting 610 points of models. You're getting one Chaos Lord, five Chaos Knights, 10 Chaos Warriors, and a Chariot. Either a Chaos Chariot or a Gorby's Chariot, whatever. And all those models are baseline for any Slaves to Darkness army and you're going to require them no matter what. You're usually going to run multiples of them. I, chariots tend to vary in rules quality as far as editions go. It fluctuates a little bit. But Chaos Knights, you're probably going to want definitely more than five. You're going to run more than 10 Chaos Warriors and so on. So I can tell you already that if you like the Chariot just, you know, visually, Buying this box twice is a no-brainer, in my opinion. Uh, 610 points is definitely nothing special. It's still above average, but not by a lot. It's not as impressive as the Disciples of Change box, but I still think it's absolutely fine. And as I said, the assortment of models you're getting here is the absolute baseline. You're requiring all of this, and the Chariot is just a kind of taste and rules thing that we are going to have to check out once 4th edition rolls around. The Chaos Lord, Chaos Knights, and Chaos Warriors are absolute baseline, and everyone needs them. As far as savings go, we are looking at between 31 and 33%, so slightly below average, uh, average in Europe, I guess, and it's fine. It's an overall okay box when it comes to the savings. As always with most of the Vanguard boxes, you're approximately getting one of the more expensive boxes, quote unquote, for free, and the rest is, comes just with the box for a regular price. So you're still saving money, and obviously the pricing that you can see here uh, on these tables is 
DW pricing. You're usually going to go to a third party retailer, you're going to pay 20% less, and you're going to save even more money. So overall, I think that this box price wise and for what you're getting in the box is absolutely worth it. And even multiple times you could consider doing it. Uh, converting the Chaos Lord to a Chaos Sorcerer would be a possibility if you're a little bit creative with either green stuff or with additional bits. And yeah, it's a great box overall. So my final verdict on this one is quite positive. I think it's a great box for beginners and not so much for veterans because veterans are usually going to have a ton of Chaos Knights and Chaos Warriors. But any beginner that is looking forward to maybe playing uh, Slaves to Darkness and wants to start out and is asking themselves whether this box is worth it to pick at least up once and paint up, it's definitely worth it and I highly recommend it. And if this one gets Spearhead Rules, it is going to be probably, unless the Rules Rises really fuck up, a ton of fun to play. And last but not least, we are looking at the Skaven Vanguard box. This one is probably already going a little bit out of production. I'm not sure whether they are going to produce this one for much longer or if they have already stopped, considering that obviously in 4th edition in the launch box, we are going to get Skaven and the Skaven there are going to get their own spearhead within that box, similar to uh, the 10th edition Leviathan box for Warhammer 40k. Uh, the Turinids in there receive their own combo patrol and the same is probably going to happen for the Skaven. That means, in turn, that this Vanguard box is not going to get any rules, if my hypothesis is correct. So if you were to go out there and buy this particular box, it would be because you like the models. I would strongly suggest you treat this box as if it wouldn't get any rules for Spearhead, and just go ahead that way, simply because I highly doubt that this box is going to get any rules. It is going to get phased up way before 4th edition launches with the 4th edition box, and um, yeah, if the turnits are anything to go by, it happened the same way there. They had an old combo patrol and that one got rotated out uh, two to three months before 10th edition launched. And the same is probably going to happen with this one. So overall, the models in here are interesting. You're getting a lot of cool stuff, but also some of the stuff is getting replaced. So what are you getting? You're getting 650 points of Skaven. You're getting a Grey Seer. You're getting 20 quote unquote old clan reds, but they have the same base size. And they have a similar silhouette, so you could still run them and mix them with the new ones if you wanted to. You have three Storm Fiends, some of the coolest models in all of Age of Sigma, in my opinion. And then you have a Warp Lightning Cannon that you can also build as a catapult. And overall, I think that this particular Vanguard box is pretty damn cool. Especially um, in th third edition or the current edition, if you wanted to play Scryer, for example, you could just go out and, you know, convert the Grey Seer into an Engineer and you had a great little box. Clan Rats are always useful, and the Storm Fiends and the Warp Lightning Cannon work into that mechanized Skaven Force. So overall, a great Vanguard box for that particular theme. As far as my speculations for 4th edition go, as I said, it's not going to get any rules. It would be interesting as an upgrade, you know, getting Storm Fiends and the Warp Lightning Cannon uh, for cheap is cool. The Grey Seer is a relatively up-to-date model. It released in 2015, I think which is like brand new, just released for Skaven standards. And the Clan Reds, while being older, they still kind of mix in together with the new ones. Yes, they look quite a bit worse than the new ones, but I don't think it's horrible or anything. As I said, the base size is thankfully, it looks like the same, so they should mesh pretty well together. As far as the savings go, we are looking at 27 to 29%. So again, a little bit lower than I would like, but it's still, you know, the regular box that you're saving, you're not particularly getting your Storm Fiends for free, but at least you're getting a Warp Lightning Cannon for free and a little bit of a Grey Seer, I guess. So overall, my final verdict on this one is that it's a decent box. You know, the savings are nothing to write home about, but 650 points of Skaven is pretty decent. The assortment of models you're getting is pretty decent. You are getting enough bits to convert a Grey Seer into an Engineer if you wanted to relatively easily. You're getting gas masks and all that stuff from a Warp Lightning Cannon, so it should be relatively easy. You have clan reds, which have the same base size as the new ones, so you can mash them together. Storm fiends are awesome. I really like their models. And yeah, the cannon is just a cannon. It's a pretty good piece of artillery. But if you are looking forward to playing this particular box in Spearhead, you're probably not going to get that chance unless you write the rules yourself. Um, but instead, you're going to have to wait for the 4th edition launch box, pick that one up, or at least the Skaven half, and that way you're going to get your way to play Skaven in Spearhead. But this box is not going to get any rules. I'm like 99% certain. So if you have any opinions, drop them down in the comments below. If I've missed anything, um, kind of made a mistake or something, please feel free to point it out. I'm going to kind of put it into the pinned comment. 
And uh, yeah, if there's anything to note, you're going to find it there. Other than that, um, please consider supporting the channel, subscribing, checking the links down in the description below. Um, if you want to join as a member, videos are usually going to go up for members a little bit earlier. And uh, yeah, all the money I'm making with the channel currently is going to go back into the channel. So that's that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.